What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to fix your skate shoes. Today we're going to be covering the most common skate shoe problems. We're going to be looking at holes in the sole, holes in the side, holes in the toe, and the sole completely falling off the shoe. Be aware of the condition of your skate shoes and fix them as soon as possible because it really sucks to have really nice expensive insoles like Remind or Footprint and then have them completely destroyed because you have holes in the sole of your shoe that you didn't know about. So nothing is going to be as good as a brand new pair of skate shoes. Suede is the best material to skate because it gives you nice grip and a nice flick. But if you're on a tight budget, there are ways to save you money in the long run by making your skate shoes last longer. I know some of you guys are on a budget and skate shoes are expensive, especially now since Nike destroyed every other company. There are several products out there that can help your skate shoes to last longer like non-abrasive grip tape, shoe armor insole patches. These are patches you can actually stick on your insole to prevent abrasion. There's also stick and flick. You stick that on the side of your shoe over the hole to protect your foot. But all of these products are still money out of your pocket. You know, you might as well buy new skate shoes. So what is the cheapest way to fix your skate shoes? Well, obviously the cheapest way is just with duct tape or Gorilla Tape, but I just really don't like the way that that feels, especially on the sole of the shoe. It's so slick and doesn't give you that good grip and flick. Shoe goo and super glue are not that expensive. Plus, a tube can last a long time and fix a lot of skate shoes. Shoe goo, once it's in its hardened state, is a very durable material. You can make your skate shoes last as long as you want them to if you keep coating them with shoe goo. Just be creative with it. Okay, so definitely do this outside because shoe goo and super glue are very toxic. There's a lot of chemicals in them and you don't want those floating around in your house. They can be carcinogenic and dangerous to your health. Okay, so if you're using any kind of power tools or any knives, be very careful and make sure an adult is present. Get your parents permission before using any kind of tools. Even if you're 35, call your mom and ask her. Okay guys, so obviously shoe goo or any kind of glue is really sticky. That's what it's for. So it might be a good idea to wear gloves. The best time to start using shoe goo is before a hole even develops. If you don't catch the hole before it starts to form, it's still really easy to fix once you've got a hole if it's not all the way through the shoe. Okay, so as you can see, this shoe is completely shredded to pieces. It's torn completely apart there and there's a hole all the way through it. Before you put the shoe goo on a shoe like this, you're going to have to stick something inside it to keep the shoe goo from running on the inside because then you're going to be feeling big clumps of shoe goo on your foot. It's going to cause blisters. So we'll use this piece of cardboard. I'm just going to stick that in there. It's really good to duct tape it in there or just put duct tape on the inside to keep the shoe goo from pouring in uh, because if you just sit the piece of cardboard in there, the shoe goo might still pour into the shoe. If you don't have gloves, then just apply it and use something else like a piece of cardboard to kind of shape it. After a few minutes it'll harden a little bit and it won't be as sticky and you could actually use your finger. So if you don't have gloves just wait for it to dry a little bit before you start to manipulate and shape it. So you just take some shoe goo, put it in the hole, then close it up. Then you'll take some more shoe goo and coat over the hole. You'll stick it under the seam so the pieces of leather will stick together. And then you also put it over the seam. So if you catch it fast enough before a hole actually forms in the shoe, you can just take a little bit of shoe goo and rub it over the area where you can see a little bit of abrasion on the leather or fabric or whatever the shoe's made of. Uh, you know, usually on the side of the shoe where you're ollieing and on the toe. You'll put a little around the toe because sometimes you'll use the toe for kickflips. Basically it's these three spots, right on the side and then right where your toes are starting and then right on the tip of the toe. Shoe goo is not as grippy as the normal suede on your shoe, but over time the shoe goo is going to wear down and it's going to get rougher and your flip tricks are going to be better but at first it, it will be kind of slick. I'm sure you've seen those videos where people tell you to just put Gorilla Tape or Duct Tape around your shoe and voila, it's a new shoe. But it's just so slick. You know, it really messes with your kick flips and three flips. 
especially the sole of the shoe. If you wrap it all the way around, you don't have that grippy rubber sole that skate shoes have that's so nice to grip to your board. It's just personally trying it out. I don't like the way duct tape feels on a shoe. So don't go overboard with your shoe goop. This shoe I just went crazy on. You know, I haven't even skated it that long and it started to rip right on the side. So I just coated the entire side of the shoe with shoe goop. That's too much. It's really hard to skate. You know, it's not as flexible as it was. Also, if you're gonna coat a shoe with shoe goo like this, make sure you stick a sock or something inside the shoe to keep its shape. Because if the shoe is leaning in when the shoe goo hardens and dries, then you're gonna have a big dent in your shoe and it's gonna be pressing on your foot, possibly causing blisters on the top of your foot while you're skating. You know, it's kind of soft, kind of pliable, but it's still a lot harder than the regular suede of the shoe. Okay, so say there's a hole in the sole of your shoe. You can't just fix that with shoe goo alone. If you just stick shoe goo in the hole, there's gonna be a big clump of shoe goo under your foot all the time, it's gonna be very uncomfortable and it may cause blisters. So you need to find something to act as a patch to fill the hole. If you have some pants with a leather or fake leather patch on the back of them, that'll work really well. So basically you can just cut that off your pants and slide it in to cover the hole. Then you just put your insole back in on top of the patch. Okay, so say you don't have a leather patch. You can basically use anything under your insole to prevent wear and tear. Say you have an old riser pad, that would be great because it's a really soft rubber and it would be good for absorbing impact. And it's really thick, so it would take a while to wear through. If you don't have a riser pad, what about some grip tape? You can stick some grip tape in your shoe. It's already sticky. It's already got adhesive on the back, so you just stick it in there over the hole and it'll patch it up for a little while. Okay, so you can literally stick anything under your insole to create a protective barrier. So I've got my insole out of the shoe and I'm actually tracing around it on this piece of cardboard. So take your insole out of your shoe, put it on some cardboard, and trace around it. Then you can cut this out and slide it in the shoe to cover the hole underneath the insole. Okay, so I've got the grip tape, I've got the cardboard, now I'm gonna slide my insole in. You can literally use anything, whatever you have at your disposal, use it. If you have old bike tires that might have popped or something like that, you can actually cut out little circles or whatever shape your holes are and super glue them right over the holes. That's gonna feel better to skate in because it's gonna be more grippy. It's gonna be rubber, like the actual sole of the skate shoes. Actually, if you wanna be really creative, you could take a razor blade and cut a small slit of riser pad off one of your rubber riser pads. You could actually glue that in that area as well. So you might think cardboard, Grip tape, isn't this stuff slick just as bad as wrapping the tape around your shoe? Well, the reason it's not as bad is because it's just in these small areas. The tape is wrapped all the way around the shoe, so you lose all the grip, but you still have all this rubber to act as grip on your grip tape. Okay, so what if you don't have time to go home and put shoe goo on your shoe and wait 24 hours to skate? What if you're in the middle of a session and your foot starts bleeding because you have a hole through your shoe and through your sock? If your sock's starting to get a hole in one side of it and it's starting to cut your foot and your foot's starting to bleed, you can actually rotate your sock, you know, completely turn your sock around and uh, until you wear a hole in the other side of your sock. Or you could take your sock off completely, fold it, and stick it right over the hole, and you could just be barefoot besides that one sock right on the side until you wear through the entire sock like that. Now the rest of your foot might feel a little naked barefoot in your shoe, but the part of your foot that is next to the hole is protected. Basically, if you're out skating and you get a hole through your shoe and your sock, just use whatever is available to you. You know, you might have a piece of cloth 
or a piece of leather. If you don't have anything nice like a piece of leather or a piece of cloth, just use whatever's available to you. You know, there might be a, a plastic bag flying across the ground. Pick it up, you know, save the earth and use that bag, you know, roll it up, stick it in your shoe, or maybe there's a piece of paper rolling across the road. You might be able to pick that paper up, fold it, put it right over the hole inside your shoe. Now, of course, if you're bleeding, that might not be the most sanitary thing to put trash on your bloody foot. Be aware of what you're doing. Don't do something completely stupid like putting trash on your bloody foot. But if you're not bleeding yet, it might work. If you are bleeding, you know, keep some Neosporin and some Band-Aids with you. Band-Aids would be great, you know? You could put a bunch of Band-Aids over your foot or over the hole inside your shoe and that would probably last the rest of the session. Okay, so say the end of your shoelace ripped off and you're afraid it's gonna pull through that eyelet and you're not gonna be able to get it back through because it's so thin there. What you can do there is tie a little knot. That'll keep it from pulling through the eyelet. Okay guys, so with this shoe, we're gonna to wanna to put a really thin layer of shoe goo or maybe even super glue inside here and just press down. Put something really heavy on it, like a weight, and let it sit overnight. You're not gonna to wanna to put a really thick layer in there because then you're gonna feel clumps underneath your feet while you're trying to skate. If it is an emergency and you don't have anything else, you could just rip off a piece of the Gorilla Tape and stick it on there. It sticks pretty well and that will help for a little while but it's not a solution to the problem. Okay guys, so what if you have a brand new shoe that you haven't even skated in yet, but you wanna make sure that it lasts as long as possible. You're just gonna take your super glue and go along the seams and just add some reinforcement right there. Everywhere that it could possibly rip fast. We're just gonna put a little bit of super glue right there. Let's just get these laces out of here because they're just they're just terrible. Laces are probably the easiest thing to change in a skate shoe. You know, you just pull them out, you can put a brand new pair of laces in. They're not that expensive, it'll be a couple dollars. Okay, so if it's possible, let your shoes dry outside overnight. As long as you don't think your shoes are gonna get stolen, that's the best way to do it because you don't wanna breathe in those chemicals. All right guys, so this is the next morning. Let's check these shoes out. So here we are the next morning and it looks like the glue worked really well on this one. It's like Eric Costin, Don Mariano, Ninja Reynolds, they're all, they all keep posting out on Instagram. They're like giving away a bunch of boards. All right guys, so we're at the skate park now. I'm gonna try out all of these shoes that I just fixed. What's up guys, my name is Michael and I'm here to show you about all my shoes I got. Hey! All right guys, so here's the kickflip test to see if I really fixed the sole of this shoe. All right guys, so I'm gonna kickflip test all of these shoes but I only brought the right shoe. So, I'm gonna keep my left shoe off. I almost forgot, it's 2016. You gotta roll your pants up. This is, uh, this is for you, so you got that right behind. Uh, see, I've been working for this. All right, so, it felt pretty normal. You can definitely tell that it's a little stiffer with the shoe glue on there. Yeah. And it's a little bit heavier on that side. But besides that, it felt pretty good. Move on to this one. Just shoe good right on the side there. <laughs> this one I really coated the shoe good the most. So let's test it out. Grip felt almost like a normal skate shoe. 
After I glued the sole back on, they actually feel more snug than they did in the first place. So yeah, it worked really well. There's no clumps or anything under my foot. They feel great. So I've tried all the skate shoes on. I don't feel any pressure points on any of the skate shoes. The shoe goo has worked out great. If this video helped you out at all, please let me know by liking the video. Also, if you have any skateboard related questions, write those in the comment section below. I might make a video on it. Definitely subscribe for more how-to videos and thanks for watching.